Hi, I'm Debbie, and welcome to Divine Destiny with Debbie. Today we're reading for Cancer Season. Now this will be for all the individual signs, but in the beginning this introduction will be a general overview of Cancer Season. Now Cancer Season will be from June 20th to July 22nd when Leo Season begins. Now, you know that when I am doing the longer readings, which I kind of look at as more the chapters, I use a bunch of cards, a bunch of decks. I use my Rodley Valentine Angel, um, Angel Tarot cards, kind of gives me the main message. I then go to my John Holland Psychic Tarot and Oracle cards for some clarification. We then go to my Osha Zen Tarot cards, words of advice. I'm kind of getting to the finishing with my Radley Valentine Archangel Power Tarot cards. I also will be pulling one, just one, because I've been liking these cards a little bit more so, my Radley Valentine Guardian Angel cards. Now, I will finish then with my um, Emily Anderson Crystal deck. Yes, I have prayed, meditated, and infused all the decks with Reiki energy, but remember, this is a general reading. It may or may not resonate. Take what you like. Leave the rest. Okay? Okay. Now, I'm an intuitive channeler. I open myself to higher power. My job, just deliver the message, and that's what I try to do. Um, remember that, oh, remember the button. Please like, share, subscribe, because it does help. And thank you so much for all of your support. I really do appreciate it. Now, let's do a little bit of the introduction where I want to go over some of the things happening in cancer season. Now, I'm also going to pull randomly uh, a card from my Weight Rider traditional tarot. Okay, so like I said, June 20th, Cancer season begins. It's also the summer solstice. Cancer is a water sign. It will, it will actually begin at 11.32 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is going, there's going to be a lot of truth in life during cancer season. There will be some high emotions. There will be some rather deeper emotions, too. But this is about cancer. Cancer season wants to know the truth. But the cancer season also wants to know the quality. There's quality in truth. Okay, it's not, it's so if you're giving half truths, cancer season will not accept that. I will say that that probably will affect a lot of the air signs too, because if you're not given the whole truth, if there's, you know, if you're lying through a mission, air signs will not like that at all. They will not, and you'll, they'll catch you on that, okay? But all of the signs will really, it will kind of rub you raw, any kind of lies through a mission. So this is going to be one of those times that, you know, there's got to be some quality. There's got to be quality in the truth. So let's pull a couple of cards for here and see what we might have as an overview for my cancers. Not for my cancers, for my cancer season. Here we go. Put you over there. First card will be Wheel of Fortune. Things are moving on. Things have to change. You know, so this is a 10 transition, but this is, it's meant to be. There is some changes happening. Again, there's going to be, you know, I know I, I talk about um, Saturn with Aquarius, but this has more depth to this. This has more strength to this. And this is, this is part of that um, karmic type of energy. That's, it's like karma cannot be denied. Karma cannot be denied. Next card is... There is the seven of pentacles. Pentacles is earth energy, Taurus, Capricorn, and also our Virgo. This is about, you know, seven is that divine number for me too. It's a divine umbrella. This is about rewards. This is about a lot of the work that has been happening. You should start seeing some rewards for what your efforts, for the things, you know, for what what you have put in. If you have put in a lot of energy, a lot of positive energy, you should start seeing a lot of positive rewards returned. Now, next card is the King of Wands. Now, Wands is our fire energy, Leo, Sagittarius, and Aries. There's a lot of Leo energy going on in Cancer. And with the Leo energy, there's going to be some surprises going on. Now, the King has underlying is air energy, thought processes, thinking things through. So there could be some surprises coming during this time. And it's, again, it's something that needs to happen. It's something that will happen. 
but it's it's seeing also the king of wands is also seeing more of the future so that does go along with a lot of what this is things have to happen the king of wand is wa waiting and watching and hoping and making things happen also okay so now I talked about that this will be the summer solstice in the northern hemisphere. That's the longest day of the year, meaning the longest day that we have light and sunshine. It is the shortest day in the southern hemisphere. It's that you know, it's when there's more dark than there is light. So that's one thing going on. Okay, so on the 20th of June, also, and this is at 11:05 a.m., Jupiter will go retrograde. It is still in Pisces. During this time, you know, and Pisces is a water sign, and I think this kind of fits with what we're having here. I kind of get these, you know, just, just my own impressions, um, what, I, what I was also reading. I do go to other sites to kind of see, you know, what's happening. But my, my, my feelings were that it was going to be warm, cozy. It's kind of rose-colored glass time. Now, with this retrograde, there should also be a sense of relief and release. But it's also the start. The start of this will also bring about what's called a honeymoon phase. Now, the 21st of June, Venus in Cancer trines with Neptune, which is also a water sign. There's going to be truth coming out, especially about love. Now, if it's a true love, it will work out really. It will actually bring out that positive truth. If it is not, again, lies will not be tolerated, even if they're through a mission. Now, the 22nd of June, Mercury goes direct in Gemini. However, don't get too excited because what happens is it will take about 14 days before it leaves what's called the retrograde shade. So there's still a little bit of that karma going. The closer you are to the, um, the 22nd, you know, as we go out, and it leaves that around the July 7th. The closer it gets to, you know, July 7th, the weaker that karmic cycle is. Anyway, the 24th of June is a full moon, and it will be in Capricorn. Now, that will be at 2.39 p.m., again, Eastern Standard Time. My, <laughs> all the things that I'm gathering, my thoughts are, this is where we pull up our big kid pants. We need to be real to ourselves. We need to be honest to ourselves and to others. There's going to be a lot of balance. You know, and remember, this will go from, you know, this goes through that cycle. They, there needs to be some balancing between home and life. Oh, I pulled the wrong cards. Um, and let's see. And again, the words, be true to thine own self comes up. Okay, now let's go on. Let's see what happens. Let's pull some cards for the full moon in Jupiter. Not in Jupiter, I'm sorry, in Capricorn. Here we go. Put these again. There. First card. Okay, so this is reversed. We have a one, new beginnings, new start. The magician. The magician is about making things happen. So remember, this is the time that I also, the full moon is when I tell you it's a good time to release, relinquish, and request. Now, when the moon, the new moon is going to the full moon, that's when it's getting bigger. They call that the waxing moon. That's the time to request. When the moon is getting smaller and it's going, you know, it's called the waning moon. And that's when you release. Around the full moon, and I would say, you know, basically go like three days before, day of, and three days after, is a good time to release, relinquish, and request. Release what's holding you back, relinquish what you don't need, but to also request. So the magician is basically saying you can make things happen around this full moon. Remember, Capricorn is an earth sign, so it's more tangible energy. Anyway, next card is here, the Page of Cups. Now, the Page of Cups has that mixture between the water sign of cups and the page's underlying energy of earth. So there is that mixture going on, and that's exactly what we have here. But it's kind of whimsical at the same time. It's kind of like, you know, expect maybe a little bit of the unexpected. I know that goes with Uranus and Taurus all the time. But, you know, it's kind of a expect, expect, expect. And if you want to expect something negative, you know, put it out, comes back. If you want to expect positive, put it out. Now, your next card here is, oh, we've got actually four cards. Next card is Ace of Wands, your air energy that we've talked about. 
I'm sorry, wand is your fire energy. Passionate aces is a new beginning, one. So we have a couple of ones here. So it could be a really wild start. It could be something that, you know, you really want to go after too. So there's really positive energy around this full moon. Next card is the page of pentacles. So we have two ones and we have two pages. Pentacles is our earth energy. This is about new jobs, new beginnings, new, I'm sorry, new ways to make money. Okay, now, a couple of things else we have going on here on June 25th. Neptune goes retrograde, and that's also going to be in Pisces. Now we have the 27th, June of June. Venus enters Leo. There's going to be a lot of energy around love. So this is going to be, if you're going to fall in love, it's going to be big and generous. If you're going to break up, it's going to be big and generous, okay? So so it's not going to necessarily be um, something that's going to, it's not going to be moderate. There's going to be a lot of things happening. You know, it's going to, you know, you meet somebody or any of the relationships that I talk about, you know, your work, job, career, personal, intimate, interpersonal, family, or home, you know, something's going to start, it's going to be big. It's going to be really, you know, oh, this is great. If you're, if it's, like I said, if it's being pulled apart, it's going to be big also. It's not something, you know, this Leo and Venus, and, and also to remember, this is when it's starting. So this is going to go on until it goes into Cancer. I think it goes into Cancer. No, I'm sorry, it goes into Virgo on the 21st of July. So this will be going on for a little bit of time. It's going to be big. If, and like I said, if it's positive, it's going to feel great. If it's not positive, eh, not so great. Anyway, now this I did take from another site, and I will post that site because I did like a lot of the things that they talked about with cancer. But I want to make sure that, you know, this, this is something from another site. Um, this one they were saying, and I'm going to say this is going to be more from June 30th to maybe July 10th, high risk of unexpected shocks and surprises. I'll post this in the community page, their link. And I've posted their site before, but not for a long time. So basically, the first, the first of July, we have Mars, which is in Leo, opposing Saturn, which is retrograde in Aquarius. On the 4th of July, we have Mars again, squares with Uranus and Taurus. You know, and Leos know what that means. That's always Uranus and Taurus. Expect that unexpected. We have um, Cancer on the 5th, sextiles with Uranus and Taurus. We have Leo uh, on the 7th, opposing Saturn, which is in um, Aquarius. And on the 8th, we have Venus squaring with Uranus. So there's a lot of um, unexpected, there's going to be a lot of weird type of energy. Leo is about, you know, Leo has heart. Leo has very strong commitments. Now, I'm not, you know, Leo wants, you know, Leo is very straightforward in many ways, in many ways. So, so there's a lot of things that might be happening around that time. On July 9th, we have our new moon in Cancer. My, my um, feeling on that when I was, you know, putting this together, and like I said, I pray and meditate, um, the message was the pressure brings the diamond, you know, so you know how they have a, you know, like the piece of coal or charcoal or whatever, the pressure brings the diamond. So new moons are the start of a new cycle where it is about, again, requesting. Let's see. We're just going to pull one card here for the new moon and see what that might say. Okay, well, I don't know. Do you want to? Yeah, we're going to take you out. Okay, no. This is the card. Here we go. The Hermit. Okay, so the Hermit is a nine. Nine has a completion to it. But the Hermit is also saying maybe it's time to back away a little bit. Maybe it's time to step away a little bit. You know, make sure you connect. Connect with your higher power, your guardian angel, spirit guide, voice of the universe, your divine. Um, also to, you know, the source. Also, it's a good time for you to do a lot of reflection. Okay, so just we're just going to go with that for the um, new moon. Mercury on the 11th enters Cancer. Serious talks, discussions about heart, home. But again, this is about seeing the truth. It may be an extremely emotional time, but it's about seeing the truth. And, you know, and again, during Cancer, it's, you know, don't lie, don't lie, through, especially with omission. 
okay? Meaning, well, I, you know, maybe it wasn't a real lie, but I just didn't tell you the truth, okay? So then on the 21st, Venus enters Virgo. That is going to be a nicer, it's a little calmer, it's more, Virgo being the Earth energy, it's going to be more grounded energy. Just be a little careful about smugness. That just came popped for me. On the 22nd, the sun enters Leo at 10.27 a.m. Eastern Time. And I did put this here because the 23rd, there will be the full moon in Aquarius at 10.36 p.m. Eastern Time. So again, we have that, you know, that change signs, you know, the, the changing energies plus that full moon energy. So, whew. So just kind of wanted to let you know um, what I was feeling a little bit about this. I will add this to the front. And of course, anyone that cross watches, I will put the time that this is over also in the link. Okay, so now remember the like, share, subscribe. But now let's start with our readings. Hello, my Virgos. How are you? Oh, I feel extra money coming for you. I like that. We'll claim that. Welcome to Cancer Season. Let's see what we have for my Virgos. My Virgos, my Virgos. First card. Not first card. <laughs> One, two, and three. Three cards. Face down. The first two, oops, the first two are reversed. Let's see what we have. Okay. First card. Night of Earth. Night of Earth. I, are you going after a new job? Are you going after something that um, is, again, I do feel more money coming to you. Night's underlying energy is fire. That's your, Air, your Aries, your Leo, your Sagittarius. There's a lot of Leo energy pushing people and pushing energies forward. Let's put it that way. Earth energy is your energy. Capricorn and Taurus too. A lot of times it has to do something with money has to do with, but usually it's kind of more going after a job, going after a career, going after a, something more in your salary, going, you know, establishing a, or going after and getting a new business also. The, I mean, but this has to, you know, this means you've got to be focused on this. You have to want this. We have that Capricorn full moon. So I would say, I would start from when you see this video to three days after that Capricorn moon, I would go outside, if I were you, my Virgos, and say, I want this job, or I want a better job, or I want to make this type of money. I like to put out to the energy something more uh, vague. So my thing is, I want my bills to be paid and a little bit more to have some fun with. Okay, so, and then let to see what the universe will give. But you can be a little more specific, my Virgos, but then take that, what you have said, and write it down because now you've made it more concrete too. Put it on your refrigerator, look at it every day. But this is about get busy, get, you know, and focus on what this is. Okay? It's time, it's time for you to do this. Now, we are only what we're two signs away from your season. You know, you take a little bit more time to deliberate. This is your time now. Deliberate, go after. Okay. This is loyal, dedicated, honorable, kind. Time to buckle down and get things done. Honor your commitments, a guardian angel. Next card. Life experience. Now, that's a 16, okay? So we have a 1, new beginnings, or a 10, transition. 6 is what you make of it. 6 is the number of man. It's what you make of it. But the 16 is interesting because 1 plus 6 is 7. So it's what you make of it under a divine umbrella, uh, you know, putting that out to the universe, to the source, whoever this is. But this means there's changes coming. This is Archangel Samuel, and this means that whatever you're going at, you will be successful in this. You will be. Now, if it is not the job you think it's going to be or that you want, it's going to be something that's even better for you, okay? And being better for you means that it, it's going to be one that could give you more money or could be one that fits your life and who you are that much better, too. I don't feel you um, where this is going. I feel like there's a kind of a rush of adrenaline, and I don't feel you as tired, okay? I don't feel you as exhausted. In fact, I feel you kind, I feel your energy high 
with whatever this change is. But again, too, it does take you a little bit of time to get moving. And not to, I shouldn't say get moving because you're very you 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 do you do move you you do get things done. But it does take you a little time to process and to say, okay, now I've got to put my steps in. I have to do some investigation. I've got to really kind of, and then you get moving. Okay. Anyway, Archangel Samuel, remember Samuel, a significant life event, a powerful revelation that leads to change. Time to spread your wings. I really, yeah, I'm going to, that's going to be your title. Time to spread your wings. Okay. Okay. Unless I think of something else. <laughs> Actually, when I do the titles, it's what higher power gives me. Here we go. Last card, the four of water. Now, this is interesting, too, because fours have a stability, leadership. It has some organization. Water is cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. We're in cancer season. This has, you know, fluid emotional. This has one of those things. Do You know, this is kind of an in-between card. This is, do I stay you know, this is what I have, and it's really not that bad. You know, I might not necessarily be happy with it, or do I go? Something's right around the corner. Something's being given to you. Something, the divine is ready. So it's kind of like, I want to go, but I'm not ready to make the commitment. Kind of what I was talking about a little bit. So it's kind of an in-between stage right now. It's not, it's kind of, it, it's, it's one of those things you just have to process it a little bit longer to move it forward. And when I say a little longer, you have to understand I'm a fire sign. So it's kind of like, oh, yes, why want? Okay, let's go. Anyway, missing an opportunity, discontentment or boredom. Open your eyes to the possibility. Possibilities, okay? But I have a daughter. Shout out to Susie. I have a daughter who is a Virgo. So yeah, I, I definitely know what I'm talking about. Here we go. Oh, wrong cards. Let's see what my John Holland's Psychic and Tarot Oracle cards are all about for my Virgos. One, two, and three. I don't know if these are reversed. We will see as we turn them over. Your base chakra. Now, base chakra. Okay. There is seven chakras energy sources, if you didn't know. There's more, but these are the ones we're going to work with, we're going to talk about. Now, from the base, your sacral, your solar plexus, your heart, so it goes one, two, three, four. These are your natural chakras. Your heart, again, your throat, your third eye to your crown is more of your supernatural chakras, okay? Your base is your is your security, is your stability, is your, you know, I need to make sure that this is a safe move for me, that the, I'm not necessarily, be, you know, going out on a limb. I'm not necessarily going, you know, I'm not necessarily putting myself to um, out there for ridicule. So there's a lot of security here. There's like, this is where you're doing your investigation. Now, once is a beginning, new start. But this is where you need to make sure that you're very secure in whatever these decisions that you're going to be making. It does work with your Knight of Earth, but it does also go along with the emotional part of that four of water, that in between. I, and I'm not, I just need to be sure. And that's okay. That is so okay, my Virgos. Next card. Here we go. This is reversed. This is a seven. So remember, we had our seven here. So seven seems to be something there. Choose wisely. Again, this is what we've been talking about. Meditate on it. Pray on it. Put it out to the universe. Remember, just because it comes to you and you go, well, I was asking for it, doesn't mean you have to take it. Many things happen. You know, I do like going out. I do recommend to people. You know, I was a manager in my past lives, or actually in my, my life before this. And one of the things that I would recommend to the people I manage is go on interviews because a couple things with interviews. One, it sharpens your skills. You really get a good sense of who you are. And you, you're kind of like, wow, I'm hot stuff. I can do a whole lot. But it also gives, it also points you to opportunities, but it also helps you to know if you want to stay where you're at. So yeah, go on your interviews. Go and look at things. Take, you know, do your investigations, okay? Next card. Memories of love. So now we have a six. So this is kind of goes along. These, the, these kind of go along with each other in many ways. There's some 
nostalgia here. There's also thoughts about where you've been. So if you have heard it before, so if you're going on an interview, or this could even be, this could even be not necessarily just with your job or your work. It could be any of those relationships. If, you know, there is, you know, again, there's a sense you want to feel secure. You need to make sure that you're, you know, you're getting all the information you need to do. But then there's this memories of love. So there is some nostalgia here. Now, are you finding that who you're talking with? And again, when I see the memories of love, it could even be a new personal relationship. But we'll just kind of put that to the side a little bit. If you've heard what you've heard before and it was something, okay, you know, if, you, if you're talking to somebody and what you're hearing is what you've heard before and you're looking for something new, you really want to put that as kind of a red flag, okay? I'm kind of getting with the memories of love to watch for the red flags. I know that that's, that's watch for the red flags because if you've heard it before and it was with a company, a person, a family member, and it didn't turn out well, but you've heard it before, red flag, okay? So watch for the red flags. I know that that, that in itself does not make sense, but that's what I'm getting. I'm getting watch for the red flags. Because sometimes the memories of love color, and again, remember what I said in the beginning, um, way in the intro, the rose-colored glasses. It might not look all rosy and wonderful, and you know, just but reality has, tends to hit. Okay, let's go on with our Osha Zen Tarot. Words of advice. Here we are. Okay. I like these because I'm, I, I always think these are the reversed ones. Let's see. I'm probably wrong. Here we go. Ah, I'm right. Aloneness. So now we have a nine here. Nine has a completion. That nines will wrap it up. Take some time. Say, take some time. You do not have to rush into anything. Okay? The nine, this is also very much that hermit energy. So that kind of tells me, didn't I talk about a hermit with the new moon? So that means that you might be needing some time to really process things, especially around that new moon. Okay? Take time. It is okay to take time. Let's go on. Next card. This one is reversed. Here we have the master. Now this is, there's two cards that are very unique to Osha Zen Tarot. This is one of them. It doesn't have a number. The master, there is that moon energy still around. There is that higher wisdom. There is that connection you know, a connection. So you've got some very metaphysical um, recommendations here. Okay, this is very, me very fit metaphysical recommendations. This is very supernatural. Now, the other thing, too, is we do have that solstice coming right when cancer season begins. There's always a little bit of a supernatural edge around that, too. But this is a nine, and I do think we had a hermit with that new moon. Okay. But this is kind of a full moon. So maybe from the full moon to the new moon, or maybe it's the new moon to the full moon. Hmm. Let's see. Last card. If this is reversed. Flowering. I like this. So whatever this is all about, you will grow from it. And not only will you grow from it, because I always hate, oh, it's a lesson. I'm going to grow from this. Great. No, I don't want a lesson. This is actually by taking a little bit of time, by actually take, you know, by really doing whatever you need to do, taking some time, connecting higher power, connecting with, you know, the source, whoever that is to you, finding a little bit more in yourself, you flower. You, you, you make the choice that actually is going to be one of the better choices. That's kind of, there's almost like a destiny. I don't know. It's, not a, it, it's, it's just almost like a gifting. Let's put it this way. It's almost like a gifting to you. Okay, well, let's go on here. See what we have here. Okay, let's see if I, I want to make sure I have all my cards here. So I like that. I like that. You will grow from the situation. Basically, the flowering is saying you will grow from the situation. But in a positive way. I know, I hate those lessons. I hate those lessons. Yes. Um, let's go on. One, two, and three. Reversed. The page of Gabriel, that's a new job, that's a new adventure, that's something that's going to excite you. So Gabriel, I'm sorry, pages have that underlying energy of earth. 
Gabriel is that fire energy of Leo, Sagittarius, and Aries, passionate burning. This is optimistic. This brings you, again, I, I said in the beginning that whatever it is that you're going to is going to actually energize you. This brings about optimism. This, this brings about an excitement too. Now, this could be more so in Leo season, so I want to just warn you that, but you know, you're going to do what you need to do now, and this, this could be more so in Leo season that you get the offer. Here we go. If this is a job, just kind of take my example and, you know, you can, you, cause these things go, this is a relationship type of energy. So energetic, brave, optimistic, playful, follow your passion. You are ready for any challenge, opportunities for excitement and adventure. Next card, justice. Justice. So, okay. So we have an eight, unlimited opportunity, justice. There's karmic justice happening. A lot of the things you've worked for could be that. It could be legal justice, but I'm not a lawyer, so don't take this as legal advice or anything like that. But this is Archangel Raguel. And this is basically saying, don't give up. Things will come to, things will come your way and it will be the right ones for you. So, Fight for justice and equality. Rulings made in your favor. Don't give up. So remember Raguel, and this is Shamuel. Okay, your last card with this deck here, Eight of Ariel. Ariel is your energy. So we have that eight again. And basically when you're going in there, you're like I said to you, when you go into an interview, you kind of come up on, I really know what I know. So I think that this is something that will actually, going on interviews, will actually um, increase your, um, it will increase your confidence. Okay, so go for it. Go for that. Take great pride in your excellent work. Practice makes perfect. Consider getting additional education or training. Now, what that could mean is you may want to make sure that somebody looks over your resume, a professional possibly. You may want to, if you're going for a job, make sure you do all your due diligence, which I know my, my Virgos, I don't have to really tell you that. Go through their websites, you know, learn everything you can about, this, about the company. You, you know, you know how to do all of that. Here we go. Let's see. Last card on this, and then we'll see what energies are crystals. This one's reversed. Eight of action. So here we have some more eights. Interesting with that. Now, action would be your fire energy. There's so much going on right now that it may feel overwhelming to you, and yet it's wonderful to be so busy with the work that you love. Express gratitude for the blessings of heaven that are taking up your time, even if life feels challenging. If you're asked to travel and take a flight, then do so with confidence. Let's go on. One last card. Here we go. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Let's see. This is the last of the last. What, crystal or stone or energy? Onyx. I love onyx. Onyx is a great, is great. You know, a lot of people have bracelets with onyx. Seeing the future, responsibility that's strong for my Virgos, stamina, self-mastery. And that's interesting, it's self-mastery when you had the master card. That's interesting to me. So things happening, like I said, I feel like your energy will go up. I feel like you will be able to, you know, you know you, you're just going to make sure you, you, you follow your plan. Okay? Okay. Whew. Anyway, my Virgos. Remember the button, like, share, subscribe. This is the most important part, though, my Virgos. Know that you are loved. Stay shining and be blessed. Bye-bye.